Hello, I'm Dan from Ace Reed Rentals and Sales, and right next to me is our 2020 Thor Ace 30.2 model. Now today in this video, I'm going to be showing you all the appliances you need to understand, so when you come to rent from us, you'll know everything you need to know. Starting off on the driver's side here, we have a big storage area. These all have their own lights. Next to that, we have another storage area where we like to place our hoses and cords for you. So in this crate to the left here, we have the sewer hose, more on that later. And to the right here, we have this white hose, which is our Fresh and City water hose. And this black wire here is our TV cable. Above that, we have the hot water exhaust, and next to that, we have the furnace exhaust. So expect both of these to be hot. I'll talk more about the hot water heater inside, so just don't put your hands here. And next up, we have the storage compartment for the power cord. This power cord is 50 amps, so all the major electrical appliances will be working once you plug this in. That'll be your TVs, your microwave, your AC units, and your outlets. You won't have to worry about the generator at all when you're plugged in, and I'll talk more about the generator later. Most campsites will have 50 amp connection, but in the case that you are at a place where you don't, we have a 50 amp to 30 amp connection here, and we also have a 30 amp to 15 amp here. So you can go 15 amp, 30 amp, or 50 amp with these adapters. And over here is your city water inlet. So if you take that white hose you saw in the storage compartment and stick it in here, you'll get water from the campsite or wherever else you are and directly into the pipes and it'll bypass your fresh water tank. So this is when you're at a campsite, you want to take their water instead of your own. In the back here we have the dumping outlet in this storage compartment. So if you take the sewer hose from before, this will be how you dump out your waste tanks. You're just going to take this part with the teeth and clip it on right here. And then you're going to take this part with the elbow and stick this in the ground at your campsite. From there you have two valves here. You have your gray valve, which is for the gray tank, your sinks, and your shower. And the black tank for the black valve, that'll be for your toilet. When it's pulled out like this, that means it's open. So if there were anything in the tanks right now, they'd be coming out. There are sensors inside that will show you how full or empty the tanks are. So we recommend you pull open the black one first and then the gray one to flush it out. Once you check inside, the sensors say they're empty. You're just going to push it in to close it. Unhook the sewer hose. Put the cap back on. And you're all set. Next to that, you have your outside shower. So let's say you're at the beach, you just want to wash out the sand before you head inside. You can just turn it on here. And below that, you have the tank flush valve, which you won't have to worry about. All the way in the back of the driver's side, you have the generator compartment. So the generator is a substitute for when you're not plugged in to your electrical connection. This is going to run on the engine gas, so as long as you're at least a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. You can switch it on and off inside. Now the only reason you'd have to come out here to the generator is if you accidentally run the AC and the microwave at the same time. It's too powerful for this generator and it will cause it to trip. So all you have to do is just come out here, take the top off, the breakers are going to flip back like that, one or both of them. All you have to do is just come out here, flip it to on, or to the left, and you're all set. Around to the back of the RV here, we have the fuel filler inlet. There's just going to be regular gas for this RV, so no diesel. We also have the service ladder that goes up to the roof. There's nothing interesting up there, no reason to go up there. Speaking of which, up there we have the rear view camera, which will it'll go back about 8 feet. Um, you can leave it on when you're driving as a safety precaution, otherwise when you put the RV in reverse, it'll pop up on the display. Now on to the passenger side. We have one big storage area over here. Over here we have the fresh water inlet. So you're going to take the same white hose for the city water, but this is just going to fill up the tank itself. So if you're on the road, you're not hooked up, you're going to take water from the tank. And below that we have another storage area. Over here is the back of the fridge. This is just going to start leaking water since the fridge is running the whole time. It's just condensation, there's no need to worry. Below that here we have two 15 amp regular 110 volt wall outlets. Just make sure the generator is on or you're plugged in for these to work. Over here is the propane outlet. So if you have an external grill at your campsite, you can just hook it up to here and take it off the propane tank. And next to that, we have another storage area. Coming up to the front here, we have the propane tank compartment. The tank will last about one week before you'll have to refill it. And if you do have to refill it, campsites and truck stations will do it for you. 
There is a sensor here that will show you how full it is, but there's also a sensor inside on the control panel. The propane tank is going to power things like your stove, your oven, your water heaters, and your fridge when you're not plugged in. Above that we have our outside TV. And finally we have just some storage for the house batteries. Near the door we have the dimensions for this RV. We can see that the width is about 10.5 feet, length is 31.5 feet, and the height is 12.5 feet. The height is most important. It means that you can't go into places like parking garages or drive throughs Most tunnels should be okay unless you're going to like New York City, but just be mindful of the height wherever you go. Now that we're done with the outside of the RV, we can head inside. First of all, you have the cabin door and the screen door detaches. The step will come out when the screen door does. Once you enter the RV, you have a few switches to my right here. First of all, we have the main power, AKA the switch for the house batteries. You can leave this on. This is just gonna be powering the small things like the lights or the awning or the slide out. Just means you don't have to have the generator on or you don't have to be plugged in just to turn on a light, for example. So this will be powered when you're plugged in or when the engine's running, it'll charge the batteries. Over here is the power step. So once I switch this on, when we open up the door, the power step will come out. This here is for the entry light, right here. And these two switches, this one here is for the ceiling lights on the inside. And this here is the LED lights for the awning outside. This here is the switch for the awning itself. The awning is going to run on the house battery, and in order for it to work, you have to have the parking brake on, and the keys have to be out of the ignition. I'll just hold it down here. It'll go back about eight feet total. It's only for shade, so if it gets windy or rainy, you should pull it in. Also for safety purposes, I have the fire extinguisher to my left here. We have a smoke detector on the ceiling, and there's a carbon monoxide and propane detector inside. Over here is probably the most important part of the inside, but above that, first of all, we have the 24-7 roadside assistance number. You can call this anytime. It's also on the keychain. You can ask any question you'd like. Down here, we have the control panel. So first of all, you see all these buttons here. This will show you the levels of all the tanks in the RV. So LPG is propane. If you hold this down, you can see all these four lights light up. You have empty, one-third, two-thirds, and full. So I'm holding it down so you can see that's full. The battery, you can expect it to be charged. Fresh water is full. The black tank is empty. And the gray tank is also empty. Down here you have switches for the tank heaters. You won't have to worry about the tank heaters. It's just in the winter. You just want to have them on just so that the tanks don't freeze over. The water pump, you can switch this on and this light will turn on. You can get water from any of the faucets when the water pump is on. We recommend you have it off when you're driving just in case the faucet opens. The water heater here, you can have it on with the propane gas when you aren't plugged in, or you can have it on with electricity when you are plugged in. It'll take no more than 20 minutes to heat up your water, so if you want to take a hot shower, for example, just plan that much in advance. Over here, you have the slide out. So this is also going to run on the house battery, and it uses the same settings as the awning. You're just going to hold down extend. And here is the RV with the slide out fully extended. In the top left of the control panel, we have the generator switch. This meter here will tell you the total number of hours the generator has been running. So you can see this is about 766 hours. So you're going to hold down stop first to prime the generator until this red light turns on. Once you do that, you're going to hold down start. And there you go. It'll take no more than 30 seconds to two minutes for everything to start working. You'll know that'll happen when the microwave beeps. Below the control panel here, you have the AC thermostat. This will control the AC unit in the front of the cab. Here you can control the temperature. You can switch between AC and heat here. The heat will run on the propane and the battery, whereas the AC is going to run on the generator or when you're plugged in. You can also control how powerful the fan is here. To my right here, we have the refrigerator. This is going to run on the propane when you're not plugged in. And when you do a plug in to a 30 or 50 amp connection, it's going to automatically switch over to electricity. It's been on for a few hours, so it's cool by now. The settings for the fridge are right here. So if you press the thermostat here, you can see there are five snowflakes. That means it's the coldest setting. 
you just keep pressing it to increase the snowflakes. The mode here will be A means automatic, and the plug here means we're using electricity, or you can switch between the teardrop, which is propane. You can just leave it on automatic. Next, I'll show you how to find channels on the TV. First of all, once the TV is on, you're going to hit source, and make sure that the input source is on TV. Next, you're going to hit menu, go over to channel, and then you can switch between air, which is the antenna, which is what we're using right now, or if you're plugged in, you can use cable instead. I'm going to go back to air, go to auto scan, start to scan, it should take 5 to 10 minutes to find channels. Over here is your kitchen area. First off, you have your sink here. We like to keep the turntable from the microwave in the sink just in case the latch breaks when you're driving. The microwave here is just a standard house microwave. And below that, you have your stove and your oven, both of which are going to run on the propane. You're just going to set this to light, spark it, and there you go. This knob here is for the oven, as the settings all on the knob, and this is the oven. Once you're done with the stove, just wait a few minutes before you put the top back on. Over here are your bunk beds. You have privacy curtains and TVs for both the top and bottom bunks. Down here in the master bedroom, we have the carbon monoxide and propane detector. And at the end of the cabin, we have the master bedroom, which has all these cabinets and drawers. We have space to hang clothes, drawers all around here. We have a tabletop here with the pole. That table will be between the driver and passenger seats in the front. It's also worth noting that there's an AC unit that's separate from the front just for the master bedroom. And the thermostat, you'll use the same way as the one I showed you. Over here is your bathroom. Most things are simple and self-explanatory. The toilet here kind of works like an airplane toilet. You just want to push down on this lever here. Just make sure the water pump is on. The toilet paper is RV specific, so you'll have to head to Walmart in the camping section, or campsites themselves will sell it. You have your sink here. I just put some solution in here. These bottles are for the toilet. Sometimes the smell might come up from the black tank. You're just going to pour some of this down there just to freshen it up. And the shower here is just like a standard shower. Down by the bottom of the bed, we have the fuse box. We'll give you some extra fuses for this as well in the front cab. Now onto the living area. We have the sofa right here. There are seat belts for two people. This turned into a bed just by pulling it out like a food pot. On the opposite side here, we have the dinette area. There are seat belts for two people here as well. And this turns into a bed, and I'll show you that right now. Taking those cushions off, you can see right behind here, we have the anchor for a car seat. Now that the cushions are like this, we're going to take this latch here below the table, swing it to the left here, and that allows you to push the table down like this. And finally, we supplied you with a third cushion just to put in the middle here, and there's your bed. Use the windows here, you're just going to take this knob, twist it clockwise to open it, and counterclockwise to close it, and the curtains are just pulled down and push up. The switch for the overhead bunk is going to be at the entrance right here. You just want to set this to lower. This is going to run on the house battery. Just make sure the key is out of the ignition and the parking brake is on. This will come down. You can take the bunk bed ladder, stick it on here, and this is your overhead bunk. In the passenger seat here, we'll give you this little envelope that has those extra fuses I was talking about. We have the registration here, and we'll also give you an instruction manual for the RV itself. Now as for the keys, this one here is going to be for your ignition. This big rectangle and this circle are both going to be for the cabin door. So this one, and this one here. This gray one is going to be for the outside compartments. You won't have to worry about these, they're just for service. You have the keychain here, the 24-7 roadside assistance number. The front cap here is much like a car or a truck. You have your AC system here. You just switch this on and off. This display here will have your radio. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth. You can have the rear view camera on. 
there's also a GPS system in here as well. So this is your rear view camera and when you put the blinkers on, this is to the right and this is to the left. The parking brake is right by my left foot here, so it's pushed down now and then just use this to release it. When the engine is on, you can control the leveling jacks here. So you just want to hold down on. Now the light's on. You're going to press auto to get all the jacks down. It'll take like five minutes. You can expect the arms to go left and right. And once you're done, you're just going to press retract all jacks. It'll take another five minutes or so. Then you can just go around and spot and make sure all the jacks are on. That's all I have to say for our 2020 Thor Ace 30.2 model. I've been Dan from Ace Three Miles and Sales, and have a great trip.